Let's Make Love was Marilyn's second picture under her new contract with 20th Century Fox. Here comes the girl who put mmm into movies, Marilyn Monroe. While tearing off a game of golf, I may make a play for the caddy. But when I do, I don't follow through, cause my heart belongs to daddy. A musical comedy directed by George Cuker. It was supposed to feature Gregory Peck. But Peck withdrew after Marilyn's husband, Arthur Miller, rewrote the script, making Marilyn's role more prominent. In the end, it was French singer and movie star Yves Montand who accepted the role. Yes, Marilyn is having a ball. Let's join her. Let's sing and laugh and make love together with the most talented people you ever met. First, there's the greatest gift France has sent us since the Statue of Liberty. Eve Montan. If you mean what you say, money doesn't mean anything to me. I get jobs. Will you forget all that? Oh, my dear girl. How long I have waited to hear that? I'm so glad. And loads of laughs with Tony Randall. And Frankie Vaughn, the singing idol of England. Incurably romantic to And Wilfred Hyde White. And guest appearances by three of the greatest stars in show business. It's all about what you can't get enough of. Fun, joy, and love, love, love. With great words and music by Cole Porter, Sammy Kahn, and James Van Heusen. Yes, I might as well propose, cause heaven knows I'm in love with those crazy eyes. We could get down to cases maybe kiss me baby let's make love released in september 1960 the film had respectable box office returns of three million dollars and was nominated for an academy award for best score in a musical Specialize. During filming, Montan and Marilyn had a brief affair while Miller was at home in New York. Montan returned to his wife, and Marilyn became ever more addicted to prescription drugs. The Misfits had all the ingredients of critical and commercial success. It was written by Marilyn's husband at the time, Arthur Miller, and directed by one of Hollywood's leading directors, John Huston. What's more, Marilyn appeared opposite two veteran actors, Montgomery Clift and the venerable Clark Gable. During filming in the Nevada desert, tensions ran high. Marilyn was frequently ill, and Midway had to be rushed to the hospital. Director John Houston drank and gambled heavily in Nevada casinos, while Clark Gable insisted on doing his own stunts, even dangerous ones. Well, don't get discouraged, girl. You might. The Misfits was based on a short story on some people Miller had met while living in Nevada. 
He had hoped to create a role that would enable Marilyn to show her talents as a serious actress. But she didn't like it, as her character of Rosalind Tabor was too close to the stereotype of a ditzy blonde. you floating around here like this you belong to gay i don't know where i belong released in november of 1960 the misfits was marilyn's last completed film shortly after shooting wrapped miller and monroe announced their plans to divorce it was also clark gable's last film he died 10 days after filming ended The Misfits was not a box office hit. Its starkness and disjointed style did not resonate with audiences. But since then, the film has enjoyed a revival of sorts and is often cited by modern critics as one of Maryland's most memorable films. The year, 1961, had opened with high hopes for the nation. A new president, John F. Kennedy, had taken office. Now, uh, my wife and I prepare for a new administration and uh, for a new baby. Thank you. His young family, led by the glamorous Jackie, enthralled the country. Marilyn, too, was impressed by JFK. She was back in Los Angeles and living in an apartment on Doheny Drive, the same house where she had lived when her film career had started. One evening, she was introduced to the president at the house of his brother-in-law, Peter Lawford. Many historians believe that this led to a brief affair between Marilyn and the president. Exactly how many times she saw Kennedy is not clear and is endlessly debated to this date. Maryland had begun shooting a new picture entitled Something's Gotta Give, directed by George Cuker and co-starring Dean Martin. But she was often too ill to appear on the set. On May 19, 1962, President Kennedy was in New York for his birthday celebration to be held at Madison Square Garden. Peter Lawford had asked Marilyn to sing Happy Birthday for the President. Against the studio's wishes, Marilyn flew to New York for what was to be her last televised appearance. The deeply suggestive way in which she sang the song both delighted and scandalized the audience. By that time, she had moved into a house on 5th Helena Drive in Brentwood, a Los Angeles suburb. She was often seen shopping in the neighborhood, in and around San Vicente Drive. One afternoon, she filled her prescription for Nembutal barbiturates. The filming of Something's Gotta Give was put on hold. 
Seizing on her unauthorized trip to New York, Fox first fired Marilyn, then entered negotiations to take her back after pictures of Marilyn swimming in the nude were published in Life magazine. Outwardly, she was happy and full of enthusiasm for new projects. But inside, her self-confidence was crumbling. On August 5th, at around 8 p.m., Peter Lawford was on the phone with Marilyn when he noticed that her voice was fading. She then stopped talking altogether. When her housekeeper checked on her a few hours later, she was lying on her bed, the phone still in her hand. She had died from an overdose of Nembutal barbiturates. There was no suicide note. A funeral service organized by Joe DiMaggio was held on August 8th at the Westwood Memorial Park Cemetery. On Joe's specific orders, none of Marilyn's Hollywood friends and associates were invited. Marilyn had died in the full youth of life and as such, she would forever be remembered. <laughs>